So they were saying they see angels and there's a tunnel going. If you have a certain amount of mastery, you can jump off and jump back quite effortlessly. This… you can yo-yo this body a little bit if you wish. There are many, many things you can perceive right here. So what we hear about your uh, thoughts on near-life death experience, you know, a lot of people are in surgery said that, you know, middle of the surgery they could come out and see what's happening, see the conversation, what the doctor is doing. So just a thought, you know, when do people really die at the time or they reach some mocha or heaven, come back? Near death? You mean near death? Yes, you yes, said yes, near yes. life, so I was wondering what yeah. it is. So when I saw you, I saw life, that near death experience. <laughs> I think Emery wants to add something. But I, I think I think you might be sort of maybe mixing two things. So there's people under anesthesia becoming aware, yeah. and let's just say for the sake of this conversation, at at some point in time they just didn't have enough anesthesia, so they became aware of what was going on around them. No, but at least a lot of people are, can see right. from the top what right. is happening down. Right. So then there, there's near death experiences yeah. where let's say someone is. Um, about to die very often. We've, we've, you know, we've heard, read these accounts, like, well, like Dr. Sanjay Gupta's book talks yeah. about these, like cheating yeah. death, yeah. in which case they then have these experiences where they may see lights or what have you. So I just wanted to distinguish that yeah. because th th they're two different yeah, cases. That's what I want to know. Okay, all right. It's more focused on well, out of body experiences. Pardon me? Out of body experiences. And, and out of body experiences. And, and we see these sometimes where certain of the drugs we give patients, they report out-of-body experiences. Anyway, when we say death, the definition of death on one level is you lost your body. That's what that is. So, uh, I mean, let's not go into other areas, they'll get you into a very fuzzy places. <laughs> uh, about near-death experience, what… what is being referred to? as meditation. We have a certain type of meditation called shunya. That means shunya literally translates as emptiness. That's not the right translation but there's no appropriate word in English. So it's emptiness or nothingness. So if you settle down into shunya meditation, it's not near death, it's actually death. But conscious death. You… see, if you have Suppose uh, you're riding a bicycle, you are a new rider with little balance, so you will go like this. Some other kid is riding, he'll leave his hands free and whistle and look here, look there and ride and do all kinds of things, stand up on the handlebar and turn around, jump, all this. Why? It's a certain mastery, certain balance and mastery. Now. You can jump off the cycle and again jump back and do all these things. Similarly with your body, if you have a certain amount of mastery, you can jump off and jump back quite effortlessly. Now it is happening accidentally because of some medication or for many people during sixties, seventies, the LSD time, there were a whole lot of people talking about this thing, sir, it's your time. It was your time <laughs> <laughs> Metaphorically. <laughs> so, uh, a whole lot of people talking about this and it really happened to them. It's not that they were imagining things, it actually happened to many of them. But it was also because it was hallucinatory, nobody knows whether it's this or that. There's no way to for sure say it actually happened to them or not. But I've met many people of those times who genuinely experience things with which their lives got transformed in many different ways, in a crazy way. But suddenly everything about them changed simply because somewhere they perceived this… you can yo-yo this body a little bit if you wish, it's not a permanent thing. Just that little awareness changed the way they perceive life and they behave and they do things in their life. So this near death, I, I'm not really… Uh, looked at any of the thing, but some people have told me, some popular books, uh, they were saying they see angels and there's a tunnel going. See, one thing is, you must understand, when somebody is going on the surgery table, the doctors may be confident, 
the patient always fears that he may die. Hello? Doctors may be confident, they know the case, they know what they're doing. Ninety-nine percent of the time, they're confident what they're doing. But the patient, once he closes his eyes and hands over his life to somebody, he always fears what will happen. So every small thing he thinks is death. It happens to people, if you put a gun to somebody's head and just shoot and miss them or it's a blank, they almost died. Near-death experience, they'll blank out for some time and then they come back. They really think they went away and they came back. And they saw the scene also from the top because that's because of the Hollywood <laughs> So, human mind is capable of creating many dimensions of experiences. It need not be construed as death, it's life. First of all, anyway, I am coming out with a book on death, an inside story. <laughs> I am doing this for six and a half years, it's not complete yet. <laughs> Hopefully in the next year or so I will come out with this. Why I'm saying this is, in… in reality, there is no such thing as death. It's life, life and life alone, moving from one dimension to another, another dimension to another. So if… if I lose one dimension, it looks like that is dead. Right now, it is a medical fact that they say approximately every fortnight, you're losing seven kilograms of your existing body and something new has come in in one fortnight. Whatever your weight, you must just calculate in how many fortnights you're completely lost. Everything that you have in your body is being lost continuously and something else is coming in. But you don't experience as that every meal and every day you empty your bubbles, you must experience it as near death. But that doesn't happen to you. But this happens to you because there is some disengagement in your experience, particularly because of anesthetic impact. The disengagement with various faculties that you're normally used to, suddenly makes you feel you're dead. Nobody died. It's just… it's a completely wrong perception. Yes, every moment of your life, if you are willing, if you are not entangled with situations and your own thoughts and emotions, there are many, many things you can perceive right here. Right here, sitting here, you can look at your life from there, okay? This is not near death, this is life. But because, as I said, loss of faculties works out well for a lot of people, unfortunately. It's not a good thing. This happened. A man met a close friend of his that he knew very well when he was… when they were in the university together, after twenty-five years break. So he invited home for dinner, he went, and uh, being an Indian household, the wife was serving and these two men were eating. And every time he wanted to cook, ask for something from his wife, he said, my honey, my sweetie pie, my boo-boo-boo, my coo-coo-coo, my bulbul, and whatever else, your Tamil, so my tangam and my chuchu, all those things. So after the dinner was over, uh, the friend was leaving and he said, you are having an amazing life, aren't you? I'm married with my wife for fifteen years, we can't even look at each other's face. The way the endearments you're showering upon your wife is truly fantastic. He said, what are you talking about? He said, you called her bulbul, you called her tangam, you called her this. He said, oh man, I forgot her name seven years ago. <laughs> Loss of faculties, unfortunately, work very well for a lot of people because they are suffering their faculties. The greatest faculties that have come to us after millions of years of evolution, unfortunately we suffer <laughs> because we have not read the user's manual.